All right, hey everyone, it's Jordy from Seven Eagle Group. Today I am so honored to have with us David Howard from New York. Uh, David is a US Air Force veteran. He was an aircraft maintenance specialist when he served, uh, now lives in New York and runs two companies, uh, Airbest and uh, Vibro, La Vibro Laser. Vibro Laser, I'll let you correct me with that. But uh, why I was so happy to have um, David on today is he has 20 years experience in the civilian world after serving and comes to uh, this discussion today with just a whole different perspective. He's the the hiring manager. He's the guy you got to impress when you go looking for for uh, for work. So David, thanks for being here. Tell everyone a little bit about yourself sure. and touch on your Air Force experience as well. Sure. So uh, my name is Dave Howard. I'm the president and CEO and one of the owners of uh, Airbest Reliability Instruments and Vibrolaser Instruments Corporation, both headquartered in upstate New York. And uh, we, in both companies, our uh, main focus is uh, Masters of Machine Health. So we manufacture, design, develop, engineer diagnostic equipment that's used to diagnose problems in rotating machines, much like the EKG for a human heart. Our uh, accelerometers can diagnose uh, and software can diagnose problems in rotating equipment like aircraft engines, jet engines, turbines, uh, you name it, if it rotates, we can manage it. So that's our kind of philosophy is masters of machine health and that's what we do. Um, so I, my experience uh, started when I was 17 years old and grew up in a small town in upstate New York, decided I did not want to be part of uh, working in the paper mill like everyone else and said, well, I have two options. I can go work at the paper mill or I can join the military because my parents couldn't afford to send me to college. So um, I joined the military, was in the Air Force active duty for six years as a uh, reconnaissance aircraft mechanic working the uh, U-2, the F-4, and uh, the A-10 Warthog. And then when I got out of the military, I went to work for GE for a lot of years. And uh, after GE went to work for a small privately held company in New Zealand that we developed very similar stuff to Airbest and Vibro. And then GE came along and bought that company and I didn't want to go along for the ride. So hence Airbest and uh, Airbest Reliability Instruments and Vibro Laser Instruments. So um, that's kind of the 20,000 foot view of what we do and who I am. That's awesome. When, so when you got out um, after serving the six years and you went for work, what were some of the what are some of the lessons or tips or suggestions you might have as a job seeker now? I mean, did you know you always wanted to sort of stay in, in you know, machining or maintenance, so to speak? I, I didn't actually know what I wanted to do when I got out of the military. I, I knew what my, I, oh, excuse me. I'm going to ignore that. There we go. So um, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do when I got out of the military. I, I knew that my military training had provided me with a wide variety of experience in, uh, in vibration analysis and, and dynamic balancing and just ro uh, rotating equipment maintenance as well as uh, turbo machinery specifically. So it was just kind of a natural segue. When I got out of the military, I, I, I thought, well, I'll go work for one of the airlines or I'll go work for uh, a power company because a, a power generation turbine is the same thing as a jet engine, you know, in principle at least. Uh, so I thought I would do that. And I ended up uh, working in the dreaded paper mill for about three months, realized this is not what I want to do. And, uh, actually got contacted by GE, one of GE's headhunters to be hired by their, uh, it's called the GE Junior Military Officer and Non-Commissioned Officer Leadership Program. So I was hired by, through that program, and um, it was just a kind of fell into place type thing. That's great. What, what advice would you have for young guys, young men and women coming out looking to start their career? What are some of the things that served you well and that you'd be able to pass along to the next crew? One of the most important things is just being comfortable having a discussion about skill set. And in the military, you're, you, you know, we're always told, you know, kind of where you rank, where you sit, what your rank and file structure is, what the command structure is, understanding what the chain of command is. And, and not deviating from that. And where in the civilian world, it's completely different. It, it, it's, it, 
quite honestly, it's, it's almost a shock when you get into the civilian world because the chain of command isn't clear, the rules of engagement are not clear, and you find most oftentimes people, um, the, the, there is no fraternal brotherhood type uh, feeling. So you, you kind of have to find that and create that yourself, whether in the workplace or outside of the workplace. So, I mean, having a discussion about your skills, understanding your strengths and weaknesses is probably the most important part and, and really being able to elaborate on how those military skills are translatable to the civilian work environment. Yeah, I, could, I imagine like what you did in the military was so technical, it was very clear, like you saw like in the, you know, there were a lot of similarities in the civilian world. Some of the guys, some of the soldiers I imagine don't have it that easy, you know, they're. No, I, I mean, I haven't, I have, we hire a lot of former military in our organization for the reason that I know what to expect from them. They know what to expect from me. Right. And um, it's just, a, it, you know what you're getting. Yeah. And um, at the end of the day, there's a lot of guys, you know, that are coming out of the different branches of service with, um, more generalized skill, not necessarily a, a specialty skill, like, you know, infantry in the army or, right. you know, something of that nature. And they come out and they're like, okay, well, how does that translate to the, to the civilian workforce? And really they, they always, I always hear, well, it doesn't really translate. How am I going to find a job? And really, it, it does translate yes, absolutely. because the, the leadership, the discipline, right. the, the ability to follow direction, the ability to, consistently deliver the ability to not have that failure mentality in your brain, the take the hill mentality, all of that is stuff that civilian employers are looking for. Yeah, I, I, I hear every day from employers, from owners and hiring managers, when I'm asking them what type of candidate do you want us to recruit for you, they all mention the exact same stuff you mentioned. They're like, I could teach them the skill, I could teach them how to do our process here, I can't teach. Are they going to show up every day at nine? Are they going to run through a wall for me? Are they yeah. going to get back up when they get knocked down? You know, that's, that's why I love what I do, which is help, help uh, people who I feel are just trained by the best leaders in the world. And yeah, I could imagine somebody who, like you said, that infantry man who doesn't know like, gosh, where do I even begin with this job search? You know, it's just so important for them to do that that soul searching, just find something you want that you could get excited about that you're passionate about. And I really feel like you said, the rest will take care of itself, man. You could, you could learn that skill, how to do that job. I can teach like my 21 year old daughter, how to dynamically balance a gas turbine. I cannot teach her how to show up. With right. Work on Absolutely. Time. That's a no. great lesson. Yeah. yeah. That's a great lesson. Those what are about- all, those are all like just, they're irreplaceable lessons. I have a, a very good friend of mine who was my E9 chief master sergeant in Korea. And he lives about two hours north of here. And we try to make a point of seeing each other like once every couple of months. Hmm. And he came down, I don't know, like a month and a half ago and, and saw our facility for the first time. And he just kind of looked around and he's like, so are you hiring? <laughs> and I'm like, you're a retired E9 chief. What, like, come on, what do you need a job for? And he's like, this is the closest thing to a, a, a brotherhood that, you know, he's found. Cause it's like, we got Marines, we got Navy, we got Navy nukes, we got Air Force guys, we got, we got a few coasties. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, we, a little bit of everything. That's awesome. I mean, and that's, you know, it brought up a great, something uh, came to me as you were talking. I'm like, A lot of, there are so many veteran owned businesses in this country, you know, I mean, there are thousands of them and that's, you could do if you want to work for, you know, someone who speaks your language, who you feel is going to get you the way like, you know, Dave, like the way you get, you know, the guys who come in, even if they're from other branches, that might be an area to search too. And there's, so you just go onto LinkedIn and do business owner, you know, army, business owner, Navy, and you'll see all these great companies who uh, are going to be, have that military focus or that, um, that work ethic, I guess, that structure. Yeah. I mean, when I, uh, when I left GE and I didn't know what I was going to do, the, one of the things that I kind of contemplated and looked at was doing exactly that hmm. was finding, you know, uh, the, the New Zealand company, as an example, the guy who ran it, the chief operating officer, funny as it may be, his name was John Cochran. 
he was also a vet. So, you know, yeah, he was living in New Zealand. He was an expat, but he was a vet that served. And when he hired me, I was like, all right, perfect. He was the yeah. best mentor I could ever have. Right. Because he had already done the military. So he got me, right. but he had also done like 20 years in business. So like I had all of those awesome skills to learn from him. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I'm going to switch gears a little bit now because I know you also are a very passionate CrossFitter, I read. <laughs> That yes. is awesome. You're not only a competitor, but you you also coach. Yeah, crossfitters. And I, when, you know, I was, I, we talk, I talked to a lot of veterans who are in between jobs, unemployed, and it's hard, man. When you're unemployed today, looking for work, and you feel like you're all by yourself and alone, it gets really depressing and tough for these guys. And I always tell them, like, get outside, man. Just every day, just go out and get a sweat and do something. Talk a little bit about how you feel, how important it is to like stay fit and active while you're working, like that stress relief for, you know, all the other benefits that come from that. So when I got out of the military, I was in probably the best shape of my life. I was, uh, I don't know, 205 pounds and lean and mean and, you know, everything was great. And then over the course of many years, you know, either <laughs> running a business or running a segment of a business or being a manager and an engineer or even out in the field, eating like crap and doing all that, you know, traveling, it's hard to eat right. It's hard to get the gym time in and everything. And then I woke up one day, I was like 38, 39 years old. And I got on the scale and I was up to 275. Wow. And I was like, I'm six foot one, 275 is heavier than I was when I was a linebacker in high school. <laughs> so I said, I got to do something about this. And I ran into a buddy of mine at Walmart who was also in the service. And I saw him and I was like, holy smokes, Ryan, you look great. What have you been doing? And he's like, CrossFit, man. So that was like literally three years ago. And uh, I ran into him and, and, and in a year I dropped like 50 pounds. No way. And then in the next year I got certified to coach and, and I just, I love it because, you know, I start my day just like I did when I was in the military. I'm up at four, I'm at the gym at five doing my workout. And then I coach from six to seven and come straight to the office if I'm here, you know? Yeah. 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 So like, but it's nice having that outlet, right? That yeah. outside of work where you're not sitting in a chair all day where you're People well, like yeah, and, and cross CrossFit in general is very uh it's a it's almost like a it's 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 very similar to basic training in so many regards because it's all group based, it's all team based. You're competing with a group of people against yourself if you know in some yeah. cases, but you know, you're also looking at the guy next to you going, Man, I gotta hustle, I gotta get past that guy. Yeah. So and, and from a stress relief, like man, I I, I got three daughters. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, need to, I, I am the one man living in my house besides my dog. And, and that CrossFit's the way I get through the day without throwing chairs at people. <laughs> and it's good. You would recommend it, whether it's CrossFit or just going out for a walk every day, just something to keep your mind, you know, off of like, yeah, you know, get your mind focused on something other than looking for work or your job. No, just purely from a purely from a medical perspective like i'm an emt too and at the end of the day it releases endorphins any kind of exercise it releases endorphins it releases stress it, it it's just better for you so i mean instead of getting all worked up because like yeah it's hard to find a job in this economy or whatever like go out and do something about it yeah go out and blow off some steam kick the punching bag around you know do, do whatever um find something but don't sit around and just let it fester because then you just get frustrated and it, and it yeah. rubs off on everyone around you. No doubt. No doubt. All right. Last question. Tell, tell me what is either your favorite tip for somebody who's interviewing with you when you're there considering candidates for a position? What do you think is a good piece of advice you can give that person or a pitfall, something that they shouldn't do? Two things. Uh, I'll give you two things. One thing, be confident. The military trained you to yeah. be confident. You're, the military trained you to take the hill. So walk in there confident knowing that you stand out above anyone else. Second thing, ask for the job. If you want the job and you feel like you got it and you feel like it's a good fit and everything just like feels right, there's nothing wrong with saying, so when can I start? I mean, I, I, I've done it and, and, and I've seen people do it as well. And, you know, 
That's, 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 there's no, you can't, you'll never know unless you ask. That's, that's great advice. You gotta, gotta be in it to win it. Yep. You gotta ask. That is a good, that is a good one. I, uh, I never thought of that to just have someone just be, show that confidence. Hey, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. What do you, what else you need from me? You know? Well, yeah, because the, the last question that anybody asks is in an interview process, the hiring manager or the HR guy or whoever will go. So do you have anything else for us? Right. As a matter of fact, I do. When can I start? <laughs> That's good. I like that. Yeah. That is good. That's awesome. Hey, this was so helpful. I can't thank you enough, uh, David, for taking a few minutes. Um, would it be okay if I put like your LinkedIn profile maybe in the description of this in case sure. anyone wants to reach out? Yep. Um, you seem like the type of guy who would do whatever to help any, uh, any, any veteran. So I'm happy to do it. That's awesome. Hey, thanks again. Good luck with everything. And uh, thank you everyone for listening.